bring me the dysfunctional. I promise you, if you fill my house with problems, I'll fill my house with presents. Because I'm not drawn to gifted people. Church junkies are. I'm not drawn to complexes and choirs and preachers and ministries. Church junkies are. I'm drawn to one thing. If I can find a need, I'm fixing to show up. I don't care that hair lips every religious junkie in the world because Jesus is looking to meet a need. And if you want to go home and have a great church, you don't have to have this fantastic choir. You don't have to have the greatest preachers in Pentecost. Just give Jesus some needs. And he promises he will be attracted to it. Or I won't have the singers, and I won't have the crowd, and I won't have the complex, and I won't have the building. I'm here. To I'm not trying to be insulting. I'm telling you, God is saying, you don't need this. You don't need this. You don't need this. You don't need the video screens. I tell you what, give me a couple of prostitutes. Give me a couple of drug addicts. Get me a couple of folks who are going through a divorce. Get me somebody who just had an abortion, and I'll show up. That's the only encouragement I've got going. What does it take for God to get in a building and go from invisible to tangible? Now I know what we'd say, good choirs, good trios, great music. Now I think that's a blessing. I, I hope we do the best we can. But I promise you. The reason why there has been such a dynamic display of deity's glory is not because we're good praisers or good singers or even good worshipers, but there's a few thousand needs that have piled into this auditorium and God is attracted to need. I'm going to help you. You know why a bunch of you never clap? Never shout, never boogaloo, never spit, never slobber, never sp Here's why. You don't have no need. You just sit there with your legs crossed and your lips locked and your hands folded. I'm going to tell you in the fear of God, our little bit of security may just be locking God out of our auditoriums and out of our lives and what He wants to do. Danger. Do not sit here unless you have a need. These people are crazy. No, no, that's funny. But I'm going to tell you what. what. God will step over a Pentecostal to get to somebody that's got a need. He'll, wa He'll walk right by us if He can find somebody that's got a need. And God knows everybody's got a need, but we aren't honest about it. We will not say we have a need. So we act like we don't have any. It is seriously, physically, emotionally, and spiritually dangerous to sit on a pew with anybody that's got a real need. You play your little church junkie game and just smile and just do what you want. But you get somebody next to you who's just got their divorce papers, who just got a cancer report, who just, who just got a pink slip from their job. And while you just kind of go, praise the Lord, they're going to go, ah, wow. They're going to create a mess. Why? Because they know that there's only one thing that can draw the power of God into that pew is somebody to present their need. Anybody got a need? Anybody got a need? He said, my people want me, but they don't need me yet. 
It's not enough for us to believe in God. It's not enough for us to love God. It's not enough for us to want God. You will, you see the revival breaks out when we decide, I need you. I got to have you. I can't function without you. When we leave with a level of desperation, if God doesn't help me, I'm a dead duck. He's got like everlasting radar. Everybody's getting an F. Fool, 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 fool. Empty. Whoa. Why? Because the divine law of attraction is that he's attracted to what's empty. He's not attracted to what's right. He's attracted to what's wrong. He's not attracted to what's fixed. He's attracted to what's broken. Yeah, fill your church with music. Fill it with programs and preachers. But my God, fill it with people who have needs. And God will fill that house. You know what the curse of this generation is? we got everything going on and a million voices talking to us. You can't go nowhere without your radio on and your truck, your TV, your VCR, all the food. That's nothing but voices. You need to shut those voices down. Get to meditating. I didn't say transcendental meditation. I said meditate and get still so that God can talk to you. Have you ever sit next to the apostolic Pentecostals that just do that little plastic? I love you, Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then you've got this idiot next to you. And they knock your wig off and dance on your blue suede shoes and slap you upside your head. You know why? When you got a real need, you can't be cute. You can't be classy. You can't be nice. Hey, Jesus is passing by and I've got a need. And I was told that he hears the voice of the needy. And under my breath, I'd be saying, but I need you. I don't know how to find you. I'm a dirt bag. I'm a low life. I ought to go to hell in a handbasket. I'm a. I'm just. I'm a creep. I'm a criminal. I, but I. I need you. I'm. I'm on the verge of getting a divorce. I. I need you. I, I, they would say to me, "Say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah." Sound like Charlie Mahaney. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And they used to say, come on, say it. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yeah, that's it. That's what? That spit on your chin. That ain't the Holy Ghost. You ain't got to teach the Holy Ghost how the Holy Ghost is supposed to talk. Don't buy into that foolishness. You don't have to work yourself up into a frenzy. Tell him what you need. Let me help you with it, Flash. God will never let you get to a level of maturity that you will not have some area in your life that you need a miracle about. You're never going to arrive at a level where you can just float. God wants to keep you in need. What did he say to Philippians? My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You can't get God to supply stuff if you won't admit you've got a need. We love to preach the story of Bartimaeus, Reverend Michael. Who, who, who's passing by? What, what's all the rockets for? Is it peanut brittle at the Pentecostal church again? What, what is it? Who is it? It's the unemployed carpenter. Oh, yeah. Who was it? Jesus. Jesus. Watch. Watch a man with a need. Hey! And all the folks that didn't have a need, they tried to shut him up. Don't let somebody that doesn't have a need shut you up. God is drawn to your need. He's drawn to your hurts. He's drawn to your sickness. He's drawn to your sorrow. He's drawn to your emptiness.